Hey, everybody, I want to talk about the dumbing down of America. Um, I think in order to get to the heart of the problem, uh, we have to begin uh, by, uh, by knowing one fact, uh, and that is that uh, today's educational aims are, are solely geared towards developing a humanistic curriculum. And that may sound good in itself, but we have to ask just what is a humanistic curriculum? Well, at its core, a humanistic curriculum always emphasizes moral relativism. Uh, that is, everything is relative and, and there are no moral absolutes. Uh, for example, um, at the turn of the century, at the turn of the 20th century, uh, the Ten Commandments were commonly displayed in many classrooms all across America. Uh, now that practice is long gone, but you have to ask why. Uh, because today the Ten Commandments may offend others with differing uh, religious viewpoints. Uh, that is, religious viewpoints are all relative. Uh, now, humanistic curriculum does another thing. It relies on dialectic opposites or opposing viewpoints, and then it exploits the tensions of those opposites uh, by providing the middle ground or moderating the answer. And let me give you an example. On one side of the dialectic, you can have this statement, uh, it is wrong to steal. And then on the other side of the dialectic, you have, uh, it's okay to steal. You have opposing viewpoints. A humanistic curriculum will come in and moderate the middle ground by saying, uh, it's okay to steal, but only under these circumstances. You see how that works? The curriculum then decides and defines the relative middle ground. Uh, not the parents, uh, not your church, uh, not your morals. The school does. So where at one time uh, school emphasized uh, abstinence from sex, for example, the schools now have decided uh, the relative middle ground and they're now passing out condoms or encouraging abortions. Or, or at one time you had boys and girls restrooms. Now schools are advocating transgender bathrooms. Uh, one time you had prayer in schools, but not anymore. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. Now the schools even want to do away with the phrase one nation under God, which is found in the Pledge of Allegiance, obviously. And that's if the Pledge of Allegiance is even recited anymore. You know, but it goes one step further than this. Uh, in a humanistic curriculum, there are now no more first and second and third place anymore. Uh, now everyone gets a trophy because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, we don't want to flunk anybody anymore either, no matter if they never did their homework. Now everyone gets a C grade for just showing up to class. Uh, for instance, I remember a student of mine at a nearby state university complained to me about her grade, stating that she deserved a B just because she came to class every day. Can you imagine that? Now, you have to ask, why this sense of entitlement? Because, uh, according to her, everything was relative. Uh, that's this culture of humanistic relativism. Uh, she believed that the grades don't really reflect the student's actual performance. Everything is relative, we're told. That's at the heart of a, a humanistic curriculum. Uh, whereas in the earlier part of the last century, the, the, uh, you had clergymen, statesmen, and national leaders. They're all giving input into our curriculum. They're shaping the issues. They're, uh, we're influencing the civic lessons to be taught in school. Well, all that is no more. Why? Um, because beginning with the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965, and then later with the creation of the Department of Education in 1980, the federal government, not the states, but the federal government took control over our local schools. And more importantly, they took control over what would be taught. Uh, that means that, that all the federal monies uh, through the Department of Education were now dependent on on whether or not the schools complied with uh, these federal mandates. Uh, the federal government tells the local schools what to teach and how to teach it, period. If you don't comply, your federal funding is cut, and that's the way the game's played. The ultimate plan, uh, according to my research, and this has been happening for some years now, is to move education away from a traditional system to an outcome-based system. Now, you're going to ask, what is an outcome-based system? Well, that's where everything relies on scripted goals, and, and the grade that the student gets is dependent on how that student performs towards those goals. And that's what we have now, a performance-based or outcome-based curriculum. Now, teachers are, are, are now teaching to this outcome, or as you've heard, they're teaching to the test. And that's why all our educational goals are now predetermined and scripted. And that's where our our current educational standards through a program called Common Core come into play. Now, another question you may ask is, is what is Common Core? Well, 
Common Core is uh, it's an attempt to get all 50 states under one set of guidelines. That's essentially what it is. It's to get everybody on the same page. And, and that sounds good to a lot of people, but there's so much wrong with this. And the essential problem comes with the fact that Common Core uh, was solely written by two Washington lobby groups. Uh, one of them was the National Governors Association, and the other was the Council of Chief State School Officers. They're also known as the NGA and the CCSSO. And this was done, mind you, without any consultation from the individual 50 states. Uh, and after these standards were created, again, without any consultation from the states, the Common Core program was then I issued to each state. Now, keep in mind that the NGA and the CCSSO are unelected bodies that are not accountable to any state. They are instead yeah, independently funded Washington lobby groups. They also have almost no experience with educational standards development, but all that didn't matter. They still wrote the standards by which all public school kids are now accountable. And now that educators on the ground have really started to see Common Core for what it is. States all over the country uh, are suing the federal government and attempting to get out of this ridiculous program in record numbers. From my research, the main objective to Common Core really uh, is that the Department of Education that was created in 1980, which administrates Common Core, is looking more and more like an unconstitutional dictatorship uh, rather than what it was meant to be, a federal overseer of policy. And I say this because the competency of teachers themselves are now being assessed and judged by how well their students perform to the scripted outcome-based goals of Common Core. And a lot of teachers' unions are up in arms about this because they're losing more and more control over how their teachers, how their clients are being evaluated. Uh, instead, the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. are now in control over that. Now, consider this fact. The typical fourth grader this very year will spend 51 days out of the 180-day school year testing for Common Core. Now, check that out. That's over one quarter of the year in federal testing. You have to imagine that. One quarter of the year wasted on federal testing. And those test results will mostly be meaningless when it comes to measuring your child's actual achievement potential. Uh, okay, now in addition to this, the ELA or the English Language Arts requirements through Common Core are cutting out a huge percentage of classic literature from the school curriculum like uh, like Mark Twain or Ralph Waldo Emerson or Emily Dickinson and replacing that classic literature with what Common Core calls informational texts, which are one-sided, politically correct pamphlets that seek to indoctrinate your child to think in certain progressive ways. Again, people, you're witnessing the extreme dumbing down of America. But why dumb down American kids? Again, from all my research, the best answer that I can come up with is that the there's a national agenda that seems to be more concerned with how your child thinks and not what they know. They're, they're more concerned with the process of your child's thinking, and more importantly, that that process follows a certain logic, a politically correct one to be exact. It's, it's a sociological experiment, folks. And as I mentioned before, that sociological agenda is not being set by you, the parent, but it's being set at the federal level by an unelected board of Washington lobbyists. So while our kids have their faces fixated on an iPod screen, texting for hours at a time, or while they're watching mind-numbing and uh, uh, meaningless television programs morning, noon, and night, and, and while they're eating genetically modified junk food that's nutritionally depleted, or while they're being increasingly doped up uh, with mind-altering antidepressants at, at earlier and earlier ages, mind you, uh, then you can see that Common Core and, and this consequential dumbing down of our kids it fits perfectly with all the social processes that I just mentioned that are already in motion today. It's a collective attack on your kid's mind from a technological point of view, from a psychological angle, from a nutritional angle, and from a psychotropic angle. And the educational angle is but one piece of a more uh, more systematic undermining uh, of not only uh, the autonomy of your child as a student, but your autonomy as a parent as well. That's why I believe so strongly in homeschooling. It returns constitutional-based autonomy back to the student and, more importantly, back to the parent. Uh, as a parent, you can reject what I call the cloning mindset, which presumes that we're going to do everything that everybody else is doing, and it gives us the freedom to design a curriculum that, uh, that uh, truly reflects quality learning.
learning that truly integrates a solid spiritual principles, one that truly promotes solid self-reliance attitudes and truly releases my child's full potential. And it gives me as a parent the power to replace a humanistic curriculum with all its moral relativism with a traditional curriculum, the way it was at the inception of this nation. Now, let me close with this, and I think it's going to make a lot of sense. It's another statistic, and this one is by the National Education Commission on Time and Learning. They conducted a two-year-long study on how students spend their day in school, how a typical student spends their day in school, and the results were astounding. You'll be interested in these. They found that a typical American student will only spend 41% of their day on basic academic subjects, uh, like math or uh, English, history and science, etc. The other 59% of the time is spent on doing coursework uh, on self-esteem, uh, family life, uh, holistic health, uh, environmental education, uh, AIDS education, uh, consumer training, uh, sexual orientation education, uh, driver's education, uh, gym classes, and a whole lot of other topics. That adds up to only 1,490 hours on basic academic subjects. That's throughout their entire high school years, which is the uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior years. Now, let's compare that to the other countries that were included in this study as well. Japanese students, on the other hand, spent 3,170 hours on academic subjects throughout their entire high school years. French students spent 3,280 hours on academic subjects throughout their high school years. And German students spent 3,528 hours on academic subjects throughout their high school years. And to repeat what I just said earlier, American students spend a measly 1,490 hours on on academic subjects throughout their high school years. And a lot of that you can thank to Common Core. People, I can't say it enough. Do your research. Know what you're doing before you give your child to a federally funded and federally run school. Who made the curricular standards for your school? Well, I just told you that. How many hours does my child actually spend on academic subjects in their school? And I just told you that as well. Now, now you may move to a better school district. Yes, that's a good move. But your child still will only roughly average around 1,490 hours on academic subjects throughout their entire four years in high school. And, and while you're paying up the Yazoo to live in that so-called better school district, just remember that Japanese students are spending 3,170 hours on academic subjects, and French students are spending 3,280 hours on academic subjects, and German students are spending 3,528 hours on academic subjects throughout their entire high school years. Once again, more than your child. And to add another statistic here, the National Research Council has stated that the very top percent of advanced placement students in America's best school districts are not any better than the average student in other countries. Or let me put it another way. The average student in other countries is equal to or better than the top percent of advanced placement students in America's best school districts. It's a sham, folks, and you've been duped. But here's the real kicker. A properly homeschooled kid can easily surpass all these countries and do far better easily and do it at only a fraction of the cost. Only a fraction of the cost, folks. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it with other homeschool families that I personally know. Again, I'm not trying to force anything on you. It's your choice. It's your child. It's your money. But the stakes couldn't be any higher. The question remains, now that you know the facts, what will you do?